Here we are, another Friday Night Live, November 25th, 2022. Hope everybody's doing amazing. Uh, we had a nice day today, a little bit overcast and drizzle. A little cool. Tomorrow's supposed to be like 12 degrees Celsius. Wow, we're going to get some heat happening. <laughs> it's a nice, uh, it's a, a blessing having that warm weather in uh, November, and uh, we're almost uh, we're almost in December. December's coming right up. Getting ready for uh, all the Christmas stuff and uh, season change. Moving into old man winter. It's a uh, very nice time when the season changes appear. Anybody can hear me? Give me a thumbs up. All righty. I don't know if anybody's on yet. Could be. What do we want to talk about? If, the stars are the limit. We reach for the stars when we Embrace a fasting lifestyle, specifically uh, master fasting, which is glorified dry fast. Dry fasting is um, as vast as the stars, as we say. We've seen so many beautiful, amazing things, but um, the biggest challenge we have in our lives, no ifs, ands, or buts, is the ancestral emotions and our own built up emotions from our upbringing and from our uh, environments, you know, our relationships and so on and so forth. These play critical roles in uh, what we are going to manifest in this uh, physical realm we call life. <clears throat> And, um, you know, it's, it's been it's 33, 33 years now, whatever, 34, I don't even know if I've lost count. Going on to 33, <laughs> um, very soon. Um, I've seen a lot of things, a lot of interesting things. Um, and one main thing is it's, um, a big, difficult challenge for people to truly make the decision and choice to um, move in the direction of balance, meaning taking charge of their health. We you know, take full responsibility for our health. And, you know, we could... Uh, make up all the excuses, but, um, you know, how do we explain, you know, people going through an amazing metamorphosis transformation, you know, completely overcoming all pain and suffering, and then we, we, we decide to go back to the pain and suffering. How do we, how do we explain these things? Well, you know, there's the underlying seeds, which are the emotion, as we just mentioned. And then, you know, we have uh, the GI tract where these emotions, I believe, are locked up in the layers of the GI tract. 
And as we continuously fast over and over and over and over again, and especially when we go on the drives and the longer ones later on, when we're emotionally uh, capable of um, fasting and breaking the fast over and over properly, you know, we, we start stripping away these layers of that GI tract. And with each stripping, we, we're peeling away the onions. We're going into the emotions and all kinds of stuff is going to come to the surface. All kinds. We'll be purging in every which way, in every orifice, through the skin, through the eyes, through the ears, through the nose, through the mouth, through the breath, through the bowels, through the urine. We're going to be purging through the emotions, crying. These are all obstructions that are physically, I believe, physically attached in the layers of that GI tract. We lock them in. Um, you know, especially if we're eating something and we have a strong emotion, we're locking in that emotion in the food. And if it's an obstructive food, it's going to be locked in, you know, like super glue into those layers. So as we start peeling away those layers, we start feeling the emotions coming forth and uh, anything goes, anything goes. Um, it's just remarkable to see as the layers come off one by one, we start seeing things transform, move towards balance, rejuvenate. We see many, many wonderful things happen. And not before these layers start being stripped away. This is why, you know, with diets, you're only going to go, you're only going to see so much. You're only going to see so much um, transformation happening. Only up to the level of the obstructiveness of the diet, as we've talked about. So if you go down from heavy duty side diet, you know, all the fats and proteins and everything, and you go down to like a vegetarian based diet, um, cooked vegetarian, you know, you're gonna kind of detox up to that point, close to that point. You'll never get to that point because we're so backed up with so many obstructions from previous lifestyle. And then if we move into uh, more of a, a mix, more of a raw food mixed in, you know, with the vegetarian type. We're going to detox almost to that level. And then if we move down uh, to the um, vegan type of lifestyle, uh, cooked and raw, we're going to move down to almost that level. And then if we move down to a uh, raw vegan type of lifestyle, we're going to move down to that level pretty, pretty close. And then if we uh, move down to um, basically uh, a fruitarian-based diet with some leafy greens, we'll move down to almost that level. And then if we decide to go all out and full-on full fruitarian, we're going to move down to almost that level of obstructiveness. Um, and then we can stay on that for years, and we will not be able to get into those layers. Those layers will only come off through fast, is from my understanding. From all these years of fasting and, and guiding tens of thousands of people, I've only seen these things happen through fast. You know, you're going to get, you know, pretty amazing results when you start cleaning up your diet. Uh, but you're going to only, you're going to be stuck you're going to be plateaued. We like to call it, we use the word plateau. We're going to plateau. And we won't be able to climb out of that plateau. Some people will plateau sooner than others. Everybody's different um, because um, uh, depending on how, um, how much uh, in the emotional sense we hold, we hold on to things, we are more retentive, more constipation. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, more of a plateau and faster than somebody who can let go of things and purge, you know, and have good bowel movements. 
Um, you know, even the same diet, it's basically fruitarian diet. You know, I've, many fruitarians, you could move their bowels, you know, eating fruitarian diet uh, because they haven't dealt with stripping away the layers. And once we strip away the layers, everything changes. You know, uh, when, you know, everybody was posting all their photographs of all the uh, mucoid plaque and everything, how many people say, well, it looks like the pudding. Absolutely, the pudding's got to come, if it went in, it's got to come out. You know, and they're trying to justify that it's the pudding and blah, 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 but they don't put any common sense to, the people are rejuvenating at tremendous rates. They're having a complete metamorphosis and they're focusing on the pudding that's coming out. It's supposed to be pudding. It's absolutely funny how people will justify anything, but to not change their lifestyle and take charge of their health. You know, common sense has got long gone, let's put it that way, long gone. We've seen it, especially these last three years, long gone. And people freely accept um, covering their face and going up, line up and getting these things here. You know, we got big challenges. <laughs> you know, quite people are doing no question. And, uh, you know, um, there's uh, a lot of strange things happening. But um, everybody has free will. Everybody has a choice to what belief system they want to have. Whether it's correct or wrong, it's your choice. You can, everybody can choose. Um, you know, we may be completely off whack, but um, when we're seeing these amazing transformations, there's got to be some truth to it. <laughs> you know, we're seeing things that is incredible. Um, so anyway, um, interesting times, interesting times for sure. And um, we're going to have, in the next few years, we're going to see and have some much more interesting, um, amazing times ahead of us. So uh, hold on to your horses. Because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a challenge. It's a big challenge. Let's see here. Let's see one sec. Give me a second here. Just trying to help somebody. Okay, uh, just give me one sec. Uh, um, sorry about that. Just trying to help somebody with their pass the password. So. Um. Now, am I in the right meeting here? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. Just double checking here, make sure I'm in the right meeting. Okay. Um, anybody got any questions, suggestions, inspirations? We're all ears, or uh, we'll just call it a night, I guess. And, uh, we're here for uh, support, and uh, nobody wants any. Everybody's fine with the protocol. It's so uh, great. Excellent. Um, you know, you can, uh, 
can hire us through a uh, website if you want private. Um, but you know, once uh, you do your homework, you read, we read, and watch all the old testimonials, just watch and uh, pay attention to what people are saying. Pay attention what, what they've, they've gone through. You know, forget about what people are talking about, challenges that they've been through after. You can pay attention to it so you know you don't make those mistakes, but um, don't focus on that. You know, when somebody goes through a complete crazy metamorphosis in 108 days, for example, and then they go back to eating food and they start having challenges. You know, you, you have to understand, you're doing 208 days. The transformative um, process will be probably at least a year after that, that things are going to be going on that, you know, we, we're not going to be able to understand and explain. We just embrace them. And if we're, you know, going back to heavy duty, obstructive food, it's going to be, it's not going to be pleasant. And that's what we've seen. You know, some people uh, choose to uh, break their long fast with obstructive foods. And that's why we're saying, forget about doing a long fast, start mastering the levels, start mastering two, three, four days a week, you know, maybe five days a week if you're more advanced. If you've been doing this for a while, maybe six days a week. Um, you know, before you go into a level seven for a long period of time or for indefinitely. Um, there's a lot of emotions that we got to deal with. A lot of emotions. And, um, you know, some of us are going to be more challenged than others in handling these emotions. Um, some of us are going to have real challenges. You're just going to go, you know, basically cuckoo. And it's uh, going to be a very difficult situation to be in for some people um, because they've never experienced anything as a, as a true detoxification at these levels. People haven't experienced it. And when they do, well, you know, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we are definitely in beautiful, interesting times. And um, I just... Uh, We just pray and you know, meditate on beautiful, beautiful, clear vision of where we want to go as, as mankind, as a human, as a mankind race, including women. Our creator only made two genders. Everything else is fantasy, illusion. Anything man-made, you can't trust. Can you trust mainstream science? No, I can't. If you can, you, you can choose to trust it. It's your choice. Uh, I cannot trust it. I have to uh, give it a gazillion questions and analyze it, and so on and so forth, uh, because I have to make sure that it, it's got its basis on nature or the universe. Otherwise, I don't want to know. You know, when they start talking about artificial intelligence is going to surpass human cap capabilities and everything. How's it going to surpass human capabilities if humans are programming? Think about that. That's why it's called artificial. It's fake. <laughs> so it can't surpass more than what has been put in. These are digits of ones and zeros. And what you put in is what's going to come out. So what it can calculate faster big deal it has nothing to do with intelligence there is no intelligence it's artificial it's fake and uh, though uh, the things that um, uh, uh, capabilities of the, of the artificial intelligence may uh, put us in awe because of the speeds and uh, uh, you know it's, it's still can't compare 
to us with the soul. You know, these, these uh, artificial beings, um, I don't think they can possibly have a soul. How can they? And no matter how much advanced we get with them, you know, machine's a machine. Uh, even if they put blood running through it, it may, if, if they put human blood running through it, it may carry the soul of the, uh, uh, whoever's blood is in there, or the animal's blood, it may have, um, you know, uh, the essence, the essence of the soul. It won't have the actual soul, it'll have the essence of the soul. Just like um, when we bury dead bodies uh, and or cremate them, the essence of that man or woman will remain because it's um, it's in a GAN state. And it'll be, be there forever. You know, even when they find these fossil skeleton bones of humans, uh, you know, for whatever, thousands of years, the essence of that man or woman will remain there. It doesn't go away. It's interesting the imprint of its creation, of its blueprint, of its um, thoughts, emotions, feelings will be imprinted, are imprinted in the physicality. You know, uh, people have gotten blood transfusions. Um, they start, some people start sensing the thoughts and feelings of the person that gave them the blood. And if it's many different uh, people that gave the blood, it could be a, a confusion of things going through. Um, so yeah, it's uh, interesting. You know, this whole blood transfusion thing, just use ocean water, diluted ocean water, like Rene Quentin did, that would be the best. It's universal. Don't have to worry about contamination. Well, as long as they're uh, taking it from the ocean properly, you know, diluting it properly with spring water as per his um, experiments. You know, Rene Quentin. We've talked about him before. You can look him up from the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. He helped heal thousands of people with uh, with the ocean water injected into the veins of people. And they may have a statue of him in France. He's a star. Uh, but, you know, the rest of the world knows little about him. But uh, after he did all that, they banned it, made it illegal to uh, use that therapy in France. And I don't know if it's still illegal, but, uh, and then they, they, they draft him into the army and he, he died and they killed him or whatever. But he, what he did was fascinating. Like, he was able to completely transfuse the blood of a stray dog that he uh, experimented on, equal to its weight, meaning, no more blood, all ocean water through, running through his veins. And the dogs thrived, they thrived. So, you know, then he found, you know, just by doing regular injections, I can't remember, once or twice or three times a week, um, small injections into people, they would start healing, you know, horrific uh, diseases. But what is ocean water? What is ocean water? It's, it's the 90 minerals that are found in nature in a perfect balance. It stays consistent throughout all the oceans and seas on the planet. The only thing that changes the concentrations, the mineral to mineral ratios are pretty much identical. And if you look at human blood profile, the same profile, uh, mineral to mineral ratios concentration of ocean water is much more concentrated. Our blood is about a quarter strength as far as parts per million. Oceans are about 35,000. 
parts per million. I think human blood is about eight or 9,000 parts per million, something like that. So what happens when you put this ocean water? So if we look at what is the, uh, what is the blood system? The blood system is the sewer system. Everybody else says it's not the sewer system. Everybody says it's the life-giving system. No. Um, I don't agree with that, with what we've learned in plasma science. It's the sewer system. And it makes so much sense. It's flowing continuously. And if it stops flowing, we're done. We're done. That's how important to have the sewer system continuously be operating in the physicality. Without it operating, we die. Because we're taking on obstructions continuously and we need to release these obstructions and goes into the bloodstream and the bloodstream is oxygenated, moving, and it's taking care of all the pathogens and so on and so forth continuously. Stop that from happening, gone. Now, if we take ocean water, which is in a beautiful, perfect state, it's, it has a life force into it, and we replace our bloodstream with that, the body goes, thank you for cleaning me up, right? We're getting rid of all our gunk, and we're putting the ocean water in there. And in the dogs, what they found is, uh, I can't remember, is within a few hours or a few days, uh, the hemoglobin and everything returned back to normal. Of course it would. Of course it would. And then there was an experiment in the 1950s or 60s from some doctors who repeated that experiment from Rene Quinton from the late 1800s, 1900, early 1900s, and they had the same results. You can do a search, you may be able to still find it online. I think it's still around. But um, is there money in ocean water? <laughs> the planet's mostly ocean water. There's no money in ocean water. There's money in blood. Yeah. What, uh, what's, the, what's the entities that are drawn to filth, to everything perverse, everything um, negative, everything opposite of the divine and creator. You know, we look at that source of energy and then we look at why are they drawn to blood? The sewer system. They're drawn to blood because it's the sewer system. It's the filth system. And that energy is drawn to that. It wants to be opposite of everything good. So it's drawn to that. You know, the urine, it's in the same category as the blood. Yeah, it's sterile, so it's blood sterile. But it's the waste systems of our physicality. Waste systems. And people will argue till it blew in the face and blah, blah, blah. And, and your choice to um, worship man or worship uh, the one and only divine creator. We all have choices. Nobody's going to put a gun to your head. Certainly the creator's not going to do that. So, but just ponder on those thoughts about what that energy is drawn to. And then think about all the programs and entities that are um, collecting this sort of stuff on, on the front that it's for um, saving lives. When we have a whole two thirds of the planet covered with ocean water that could be utilized if it weren't for the dollar sign being the number one important thing for the cartels to do. 
most of our we pick it up for you know pennies on the dollar compared to anything else pennies so yeah we are in interesting times and uh, we should uh, we should um, if we want to move in the direction of balance we need to do certain things and uh, stuff like this would be prudent to know you know not do uh, your own uh, type of procedures if you want to have an emergency situation because um, I never trusted the uh, medical system before and I trust it much less after these past three years after what they've done and after what people have done I trust it much less everybody has their choice to what they believe and what they trust. We're going for a long, wild ride over these next few years. <clears throat> long, wild ride. Hold on. Hold on. And hopefully, uh, we have enough resilience to pull us through and in the last three years we needed a lot of resilience and a lot of people ended up you know taking their lives in record numbers because of the uh, uh, being locked up and not being used to that in their lives being on their own or being so many hours with other families and friends or their partners and so on and so forth. So we've seen a lot of things happen because of that. Hello, Barbara, Marco. Interesting times. We need to laugh more, right, Barbara? Banana. <laughs> it's uh, I uh, it's going back in the memory and to the child and remember, you know, we get into those laughs that we couldn't stop. Just couldn't stop laughing and rolling. It's just, <laughs> what a blast. I was just looking through some old photographs. And, wow. Going down memory lane. This is beautiful. I lost all my digital photographs. Lost uh, three hard drives. Three hard drives. And two backups. I lost everything. What are the chances of that? Yeah. Yeah, I've never had the, <laughs> if you want to call it good luck with the computer stuff. I've lost all my information a few times with computers and that's why I ended up getting two backups that time. I have two partial backups now. And, you know, it's, uh, You know, these solid states now, they just go. The other ones used to give you a warning, but one of them gave me a warning. It was on its way out. I was trying to copy things and I put, and then the other one, no warning, just to put the old type of drives with new solid states or uh, they give you zero warning. And they're gone, they're gone. I have a few uh, USB sticks go on me. Um, but anyway. What's in here? 
is never erased. Um, we have cha more challenging times accessing it, uh, depending on our lifestyle. But it's never erased. Yeah. Never erased. Anybody's got any uh, questions, suggestions, comments, inspirations? Or we can call it a night. Um, beautiful times are ahead of us. Let's pray and focus on that. Let's have a laugh. Every day we'll have a good laugh. Let's pray, meditate. Praise the Creator. And uh, we'll see you back on the page. We'll see you next Wednesday. I think I'm free. And uh, we'll see you. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy your rest of your evening. Good morning or your afternoon, wherever you are. And we'll uh, sign off. Thank you so much. Have a great one.